Right. <coughs> and as far as uh, that's that's a really interesting point because if someone's been taught that from one of their earliest memories, how is it even possible to try and to change reform it, that person? To yeah, reform it's that uh, possibly after the war when the Germans, the Nazis, some of the Nazis saw and really learned what had happened. Hmm. I think some of them had a lot of guilt. Okay. I'm not so sure that they had regret or, or, oh, I see. or felt it shouldn't have been done, done. But, but there was guilt, guilt. Okay. yes, and they passed some of that guilt on to the next generation actually, because okay. I've talked to people who sort of had this feeling, but... Um, I see what you mean. <coughs> All right, um, that, was, that was good, I appreciate that. Um, um, why, and here's a more general question, why do evil things happen? Why, well, why even exist? I've, first of all, um, how should I put that? And I'm going to talk about that too. Um, when people are unhappy and discontented, they look for, for a scapegoat. Okay. And the really conditions bad. in Germany and Austria were very, very bad, and I want to talk about it, mm -hmm. after the First World War. Mm -hmm. After the Second World War, we learned our lesson, and we instituted the Marshall Plan, mm -hmm. which helped the defeated nations get back on their feet. But after the First World War, they didn't have that, and the conditions were horrible. And Hitler came along. There was always a lot of anti-Semitism in Germany, for whatever reason, jealousy, uh, the Jews were different, quite often they looked different, their customs were different. And sometimes when, when you don't know about something, you, um, you're afraid of it, and you tend to be leery of, of it, it, you know. Um, and then when things were so bad, and Hitler came along and he said, listen, this is not your fault, again I'm going to repeat this, this is the fault of the Jews. Oh, okay. Ah, Let's jump on this bandwagon. Jew. Let's get rid of the Jews. I think at first, maybe. I, mean, I could be wrong. I think you're right. <laughs> uh, but at first he probably didn't want to kill all of them. That He hadn't totally made up his mind to that. But he wanted to get rid of them. Well, nobody wanted this. Who's going to, I mean, we, gonna take this us, country right? was in a depression. Um, nobody wanted all these people who would come and take jobs and... You know, many of them, uh, like my family, were highly educated people, and they would have taken jobs that uh, were available, or, went, or really were not available, like, for instance, in this yes. country. So, I mean, it's one thing to say, get out, where are you going to go where to? Where am I supposed to? Now, my husband's family, I'm not going to talk about that, my husband's family, my late husband, was also born in Vienna, and uh, his, his family was immensely wealthy. They had a, the largest um, onion and potato wholesale business in Europe. Okay, well. And so they were singled out immediately. And they had sent some money abroad. They were featured on, there was a newspaper called the Stürmer, okay. which was a terribly anti-Semitic little paper that okay. Hitler put out. And they were featured on the front page, the criminals. And my father-in-law was arrested immediately, because I wasn't married at that point. Right, right. Um, but he was arrested immediately, and in order to get out, they had to turn over everything, all of their holdings, which were extensive, to the Nazis, but they let them get out as a family, and they had money abroad, so they didn't need an affidavit, or, which we did. Okay, you know, okay. we had nothing like that. We were just average Ouch. people. So, um, he, he let them get out, but there was maybe 5% of the entire Jewish population in that you know, so they got out right away. They had to. Right. Yeah. Uh, they lose their lives. Right. Wow. Right. So the <clears throat> there was a there's a publication, a German publication, that would feature, like, this is the family they hate. Mm-hmm. Some place we had that on the walls. Wow. Somewhere. Uh, it's called the Stürmer. S T S T U E R M E R. S T U E R M E R. And what does that mean? Um, German means like to advance, okay. uh, to take something by storm, okay. sort of. Um, and they, uh, I think Gerberts put that out. I'm not sure, no, Streicher, maybe Streicher, I don't know. 
one of those top knots that put it out. Um, and they had caricatures of Jews, you know, with the large nose and, and the beard and horrible things. And they printed this rag um, and distributed it to everybody. And it was just full of lies and hate. And, and you know, you would read this, and after a while, you read something often enough, you believe it. Mm-hmm. Oh, fine, fine, fine. <laughs> I didn't have to worry about being late. I couldn't get out of my house. I was actually doing museum business at home, and I kept looking, so I gotta go. Um, so that's that's how they spread a lot of their papers. Yeah. See, don't forget, we did have television, and we had limited radio access. We could only listen to what they wanted us to listen to. So. That, that was drilled into the population over and over again. They heard it on the radio, they saw it in the paper, and Hitler made speeches, and he was a dynamic speaker. I can imagine. He was dynamic. I mean, little man, and sick, sick, sick. Sick mind. Oh. I can't even imagine. Un- unbelievable. And not educated. How, how he got to where he was is just, just, as I say, because people were so desperate. Right, right.